I want you to start singing. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to begin to rejoice yes. for whatever it is that you have on your mind that you put before God and say, Lord, Thank this you. is what I believe that you want for me, yeah. but I don't want you to wait until the battle is over. I want you to shout now. I don't want you to wait till you get the house. I want you to start thanking me for the house right now. I don't want you to, uh, my God, I don't want you to start rejoicing yes, over yes. seeing the righteous fruit, yes. the, the fruit of righteousness come forth in your life yes. out while you're dirty and nasty and yes. filthy yes. And, yes. And, and all yes. unholy and ungodly. Yes. I want you to start giving me praise. Yes. I want you to start giving me glory. Yes. Even though they look at you and they say, look at Gloria. She's a hypocrite. Yes. How can you praise the Lord when you smoked that joint last night? Come on now. Come on, preacher. Come on. Come on. God? How can you clap your hands when you slept with that man last night? Come on, Jesus. But God says the ones that have not borne fruit. Jesus. The ones who have not given birth to their vision. You've been walking around with that vision for the last 12 years. You're a failure. You know some failure. How many of y'all saw the video on YouTube with 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 the uh with the lady that had the daycare? And, and there's a lady, she's got a daycare. And, and and the newscaster comes to the daycare because um uh, uh I guess an escape con or something was in the neighborhood. He had done a robbery or something. And the police were chasing him. And he ran into the daycare. And, and now watch this, because most folk on Facebook miss. Go back and watch that again. Watch the pattern. The newscaster standing there, he's saying to the lady, well, could you have put some better security measures in place? And she says, our security system is, is perfect. I, 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 our security plan is perfect. We did exactly what we were supposed to do. And he said, well, you know, couldn't you have done some things maybe a little more correct? She said, no, our security plan is perfect. And he kept pushing, and she kept saying what she said. And he kept, well, couldn't you just done something wrong? Don't that remind you of somebody? Huh? Y'all ain't getting it. How he pushes and pushes and pries and pushes trying to get you to change your talk. But she kept saying the same thing. I did what I was supposed to do. Uh, are you sure you didn't mess that up? No, I did what the Lord told me to do. Are you sure you should have started that church? You think maybe you just doing that just to get some attention from folks? You sure God called you? Well, you know you ain't got that much money. You sure the Lord is on your side? But you got to keep telling him the same thing. Yes, I am doing what God told me to do. But see, he will push you and push you and push you until you change your thought and you become small. But you got to be able to lift up your hand and say, God has still got something for me. It doesn't matter what I've been through. It doesn't matter how many mistakes I've made. It doesn't matter how much I may have messed up. It doesn't matter who looks at me as if I'm not who I say I am. I am who God says I am. And he's still going to do what he said he's going to do. For being small. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship. Yes. It is he that has made us. That's the word. Come on, and not that we ourselves. Come on. Come on. And you got to be able to tell the devil that when he made me, he didn't make me for nothing. Come on, come on. When he made me, he didn't make me to be a drunk. I may have been drunk, but he did not make me to be a drunk. I may have gotten drunk, but he did not make me to be a drunk. Now you got to understand that you may have done some things, but you are not what you've done. You just done what you've done, but that's not you. He said, We are his workmanship. Why would I didn't mean to get created under Christ Jesus unto good works? 
that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. And when he said good works, he, he didn't just mean just stuff like, you know, giving to the Boy Scouts and, you know, walking old ladies across the street. There you go. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, 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 he said good works. Mm -hmm. The works that he died to enable us to do. Yes. Amen. The works that bring forth his kingdom. Yes. The yes. works that yes. manifest yes. the kingdom yes. of God in the earth. He yes. said he before the foundation of the world, he formed you, made you, yes. and designed you to do a specific work yes. and to fulfill a specific function. Yes. 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 But see, you notice the devil don't want you to think like that. Amen. Amen. First of all, they have you thinking your skin too dark. Uh -huh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, huh? come on. And a lot of times, it's not even free. from the ones out there; it's from the ones in here. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 When you start, you have you noticed that when you start talking about stuff like purpose, yes. and you start talking about stuff like uh, uh, having a designated function and a destiny yes. to fulfill in the earth, everybody and everything around you, they go, uh, who does she think she? Yeah. That's the truth. Now all of a sudden you Preach think you special. Own. You done got bougie on us. Uh, 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 uh. huh? yeah. Why can't you just get a job, come home and watch TV and die like the rest of us? Come on now. Uh, uh. Who do you think you are sitting in the front of the church? Uh, Don't you know you belong in the back? Who do you think you are testifying? Who do you think you are talking about you going to teach Bible study? Come on, Listen. Come on, come on. Come on. Amen. I walk in the fivefold ministry of ascension gift of apostle. Yes. Come yes. on, come on. And what that does is that enables me to look from this point this point of view right here and see that everybody in this room has the capability to do what I'm doing right now. Right. Everybody. everybody. Somebody say everybody. Everybody. But see the Bible, not the Bible, but religion will tell you, huh? That that's not my job. That's his job. And that's her job. And that's her job, and that's her job. But how do you know that's, how many of you know that's not even fair? Right. Huh? Right. Now, some folk want you to believe that, yeah, it's my job, and you got, ain't got nothing for y'all to do except put your money in the plate. Come on, Jesus. Clap your hands and go home. That's right. Uh, but my job is to tell you that God has something for you. He created you in Christ Jesus unto good works. And you've got to get the mentality that I'm tired of being one of the little ones. God got some big right down on the inside of me. Huh? And this, 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 this doctrine of false humility that we propagate in the church is a lie. That if God spoke down on the inside of you and he said evangelism, you are supposed to say the same thing that he said. I keep telling you that the devil is trying to get you to talk different than what God said. And what you got to understand is that when he looks down on the inside of you and he says prophet, that means you got to say prophet. And the more you say prophet, the more prophet you'll be. Remember, 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 remember. Remember yes. how I talked about what you say out of your mouth? Yes. Yes. You're going to be what you say you are. Yes. And I'm telling everybody in here today because everybody in this room yes. is going to get a chance at this mic. And don't you ever stand in front of God's people and talk about what you're not. Come on. All right. Amen. Do not do that. If God give you something to do, stand up here boldly and do it. I don't care if it's the first time and it don't feel right. Stand up here because if God calls you up here, he will give you the power to do what he calls you up here to do. He has created you into good work. That cousin that's in jail, he going to get saved because you stay faithful. Huh? That grandchild that's running out in the street, she going to make it because you kept right on praying. God got a good work for us to do. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being little. I'm tired of being small. If I'm the apostle in the church, I ought to be the apostle on my job. See, the reason that we got all these titles, I ain't even did nothing with the title. But the reason that we got all these titles in the church, and y'all been in church longer than me, so you know. You know, back in the day, everybody had to be a bishop because the only place you could have any kind of power was in church. Because uh, you had to be boy when you was on your job. Oh, yeah. 
But we didn't understand biblical principles. We didn't understand the biblical principle that if God called me to be a bishop in the church, guess what? I ought to be the bishop on the job. <laughs> I'll be the bishop when I go to the bank. Come on, I'm going to say we walk and I say because they said no. <laughs> what do you think they got that song when the devil said no, no? God said yes. Hey. They don't choose to rejoice. Yes. Oh, when they were rejected, they were rejoiced. When they were hung up on trees, they were rejoiced. Not because they were hung, but because they knew that God had something for them that could never be destroyed. In Numbers the 13th chapter, the Bible talks about the Bible talks about how the children of Israel went in, went into the land to spy out the land. Am I, how much time am I? Am I using too much? Went in the land to spy out the land. And one of the biggest things that, uh, that, 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 that stuck with me about that is they went in and they saw all the riches that God had for them. Come on now. How many of you came up in school and how many of you came up in school and, and, and it seemed like college was for everybody except you? I didn't get my first degree until I was in my 30s. Yes. Because nobody talked to me about college. College counselors didn't talk to me about college. They talked to the white kids about college and they talked to the special black kids about college. They say nothing to me. But that's not for you. When, 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 when I was 13 years old, I, I used to get into chemistry. I like chemistry. Amen. And I used to be able to like read the periodic table of the elements. I could I could go to hydrogen, which was the first element, and look at the atomic weight and the atomic number, and I could tell you what the next element is based on the, the atomic weight and the atomic number of the last element. You know, all the way down to the to the last one. There was like 104 of them back in those days. But you know, now this was in Florida. Get this, this in Florida. In 1976, little black boys are not supposed to like chemistry. Mm. Oh my God. My God. So my teacher looked at me, Mr. Jones, and he said, you know, Harry, like that. I've been watching you, and I'm convinced that you don't know what you're doing. So y'all young people better hear me. Because you got some of them same spirits meet you at the door when you come to school. You know why they saying that? Because their job is to discourage you from understanding that God has big things for you. I'm tired of being small. And so they went into the land and they saw everything that God had for them, but at the same time, they saw opposition. And they spent so much time looking at the opposition. And the problem is, we spend so much time looking at what's against yeah, us. Come on, come on. Huh? That we neglect to see who's for us. They got giants in there. Yeah. We ain't gonna make it. Come on. And it didn't even say that the Giants could beat them. It said they beat them. They, they was what we used to call on the basketball court, self-checked. Come on. Huh? Y'all know what self-checked is? Uh -huh. I mean, you, you can get up and you can, he can shoot the ball all he wants to. His mind, bro, his mind, when you shoot that ball, uh -huh. your Amen. mind has to push the ball. But they can tell by the look on your face when you shoot the ball, you already, I ain't gonna make it. Air ball every time. Because you thought so. Break it, break it, break it, Come on now. That's what we gotta break. Huh? I'm tired of being small. I'm tired of having a small church. I'm tired of having a small ministry. I'm tired of having small dreams. Come on, come on. The only one who's stopping us from being great is us. John Paul Jackson said it this way. He said, You can be a general. Huh? You can be a general in the spirit, and they'll treat you like a private. Come on. Yeah, yeah, amen. Because you come to church and you shout and you dance and you jump. Come on, come on. Amen. And then you go home and Willie meets you at the door. House church. <laughs> Instead of telling that devil, you gotta leave. <laughs> you either gonna get saved or you gonna get out of my No, you ain't you go get saved somewhere else, but get out of my house now. <laughs> huh? 
Because the devil said, you need a man. You don't need a boyfriend. You need Jesus. Daniel 11 and 32 says that the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. We look at other people who are strong and we look at other people who are doing exploits. And sometimes we get jealous and sometimes we become haters. And sometimes we just, Lord, why can't I do what they do? Come on, come on, come on, come on now. People like Smith Wigglesworth, we laughed at his name, but nobody laughed at his ministry. That man stayed on his knees so much that his knees, his knees had indents in it from praying. But you know what? He will walk up to dead men laying in coffins, had, had the full to hide in him. Come on, Jesus. And was saying, the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And they would live. But don't you understand that every single thing that Jesus came to do, he said, I have ordained that you shall do even greater works than that. We waiting on the bishop to come and lay hands on us. We waiting on the evangelist to come and prophesy on us. But you ought to be the one to walk up to that lady in the grocery store and say, the Lord told me to tell you that everything is going to be all right. You ought to be the one. Huh? You don't have to be the pastor in the church, but you can be the pastor of the project. You can be the pastor of the basketball team. You can be the pastor of the cheerleading squad. Huh? You can tell them girls, look here, we not going to get in no fight in this game because we're going to pray. We're we going to pray before the game even starts because I'm tired of us being small. And then it's time for us to stop making excuses. Yes, Lord. There is at Jerusalem by the sheep you mark at a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, the house of the house of God, having five porches. And we know that there was a great multitude of impotent folk there. Impotent folk mean weak folk. Impotent folk is small folk. See, the world don't care if they really don't care if we come to church. As long as we don't have no power. Come on, come on, say it. They really don't care if we come to church. As long as we don't look at the homosexual and say, you got to repent, buddy. They don't care about us coming to church. Huh? As long as we don't, everybody talk about Trump. Huh? Watch this. Do you know how much good a saved Donald Trump could do? Right, that's right, that's right. But see, the devil don't even want you to think about it. Yes, 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 right. Huh? That's right. We need somebody on our in the kingdom that's got that much money, yes. that much influence, oh, yes. that much power. Yes. Lord have mercy. But we'd rather just dog. But he said, unto good works. Yes. Huh? That even Pray. back in those days, powerful Roman politicians, they wasn't sitting around talking about him like a dog. Come on now. They were leading them folks to Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Huh? Right. Right. The and the Claudius yes. and the Caesars and the Augustus of the world, they were coming running to the foot of the cross, crying, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Stop talking about them and start praying for them. Because as long as we don't do our job, we're going to stay small. Oh, that's right. Jesus said to that man at the beautiful gate, will you be made whole? Mm. Yeah. In other words, I can heal your legs. Yeah. Uh -huh. But there's a whole lot of folk out here got healed legs and they're still drunk. <laughs> got healed legs and they're still beating their wives. Yeah. Yeah. But he said, will you be made whole? Will you get up from here and be a productive member of society? Will you get up from here and tell some young boy that you think you know everything, but I've been lame for the last 38 years, and I come to tell you that you're lame. You might be six foot tall and 300 pounds, but you're still lame, and you need to be healed. Let me bring you to the one who can put you in your right mind. Yes, yes, yes. There was a song I used to like out in the world. And I used to lay, even when I used to lay in my junk, I used to lay in my junk and I would listen to this song. It was by one of my favorite artists, Eric Clapton. It was called I Shot the Sheriff. <laughs> See, God can give you a spiritual lesson out of anything. See, you gotta, you, I don't know, you won't get this if, if you wasn't <clears throat> born premature. Huh? If you weren't born seven months 
weighing two pounds and seven ounces. Amen. If you wasn't born with pneumonia, came out the womb fighting. If you hadn't had to watch your mother die when you was four years old and have to blame it on you, maybe you wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. But there was a line in there. He said this. If you wasn't, like every time you tried to go forward, amen, it was always a battle. You watched other people slide through. But when it was your turn to, 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 to make sergeant in the army, there was a battle. When it was your turn to get licensed in ministry, it was a battle. When it was your turn to get ordained, it was a battle. Every time it was time, it, it was like there's a spirit in the universe that says, Harry Jackson can't have anything. I got, I got. You know what it's like to live under that? You know what it's like to stand up in the pulpit, sit in the pulpit with the rest of the preachers and have them look at you like, nigga, what you doing up here? You can't make me leave. God sent me here. Come on, come on now. You talk. Right. Right. Watch this. Eric said this. Somebody gonna identify this. He said, Sheriff John Brown always hated me. For what? I don't know. Huh? Until I started reading this book, I didn't know why everything would seem like it was against me. You got to understand that the devil hates you. There you go. That's right. Stop looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. He hates yes. you. Yes. Yes. He hates you because you're made in the image of God. Yes. He it. hates That's you it. because That's if he can do anything, he can have you not get to the place where you turn around and the peaceable fruit of righteousness come forth in your life. And where you used to be a whoremonger and a, and a gangster, all of a sudden you start walking like oh, Jesus yes, and talking yes, like yes, Jesus on, and acting like yes. Jesus and looking like Jesus. Yes. He hates you. Like, hey, come on, man. So hey. the world. And right now you said, for what? I don't know. Well, mm. all I know is that every time I plant a seed, he says, kill it before it grows. Jesus. And then he said it again, like, like the, for emphasis. He said, kill it before it grows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then the line I like come behind, he said, but I say no. Amen. But I say no. Amen. And that's what we got to get to the place where. Will you look that devil in the eye, you say, no. Come on, Come on and sleep with this man, no. Come on and smoke some of this dope, no. Come on and drink some of this liquor, no. Come on and rob this man, no, no, no. Come on and give him, get into your flesh and give him a piece of your mind and lose another job, no. Come on and stay home from church. Get on the phone and lie to the pastor. You don't need to go to church, no. You pretty. Don't you want to go with me? No! <laughs> huh? right. Pretty Tony goes, no. Do you want to ride in my Mercedes, boy? <laughs> That's what y'all time. <laughs> no! No! Because if I go with you, you're going to uproot my seat. Yes. Because I'm get some pretty things out there in the world. Amen. Why don't they Whitney Houston dead? Huh? Because they let her sing in church, but they didn't make her go to Bible study so she can learn how to say no. Hallelujah. Word of God is the key to enlargement. Psalm 119 and 32. I will run the way of thy commandments. When thou shalt enlarge my heart. All that my ways, David said. We're directed to keep thy statutes. And I like the way he said, oh, like it was a cry from his heart. I really do want to be what you want me to be. But I got all these other ways going on, and I need my ways to come into line with your word. Yes. Ain't for no show. I'm trying to get right. Come on. Yes, Lord. But we got to put away the things that cause us to be yes. small. Yes, yes, yes. If a cigarette causes you to be small, you need to stop smoking. Come on. Now. Hallelujah. 
Yes. If that man causes you to be small, you need to put him out of your house. On, if gossiping on your job causes you to be small, because you get over to, next to the water fountain and you start talking about Susie and talking about Lucy, yes. then you come back around at lunchtime to want a witness. And now your witness is gone because you have made yourself small because they're still thinking about how you talk about folk behind their back. And now you want to talk about Jesus. Somebody say, I'm tired of being small. I'm tired of being small. Yeah. And wherefore, see, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah. Yes. That same father Jesus. who used to call me stupid and dumb and you ain't gonna never be nothing. You're you, you gonna catch hell all your life. My God gave his life to Jesus at the age of 91, and now he's in that cloud of witnesses. Come on now. That same father, God can change the direction of a man. He might not be here with me, but I can hear him saying, come on, boy. Come on, boy. If I can make it, you can make it, too. Come on, boy. Yes. Come on, now. So we're going to run this race, and we're going to be big in, in God. Yes. We got to lay aside every weight. Yes. We got to lay aside all the sin. Yes. Some things are not sin, but it'll slow you down. Yes. And you got to put it aside. I don't care if people say that you're trying to be deep. But you got to make up in your mind that God got more for me than to work a job, come home and watch TV and die. There's a work in the earth with my name on it. There are souls out there that are waiting on you, and you are the only one who can reach them. So I gotta lay aside every weight. We will not have authority with God. Until we learn how to get along with him. The only way to get along, you gotta, you gotta get intimate that worship. That same thing we did today. You gotta take that same song home. You know how many times I sung that song in the car? Nobody can hear me. I did, this, as a matter of fact, this is the first time I ever sang that song in public. I sang that song to God more times than I ever sang to him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if there was any power in it, it's because God reached all the way back two years ago when I sang it to him in the car. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. But when you're in transition, the only one you need is Jesus. That, there Amen. you go. Amen. Uh, Amen. Yes. I went through Amen. some stuff. I don't know who this is for. That taught me. When I came back from Germany in 1999, and I tried to get all the stuff that my brother had. Mm -hmm. You know, the house in the suburbs and the pretty wife, having a church. And, Came back over here, called myself meeting this lady. You know, she was she was an awesome lady too, come on, man. Come on. Hey Amen. PhD, senior research scientist at Kodak, and I thought I was in love. <laughs> I mean, I was in love. You know, you had it bad. I mean, Rick James in love. You belong to me. You know, and you know they really got it bad when you go. And we belong to each other, baby. Yeah, listen to me, baby. You know, you know, he really got mad when he thought, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> that boy <is> gone. <laughs> I'm gonna <I'm> stop. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause the line is big. But when you mess up, bang it. And when you really mess up, bang it, yeah, yeah. Throw, throw three or four of them in there. But you know, I used to go sit down and I would say to God, I would say, God, she's so beautiful. And you know what he say? That's what you used to say to me about me. I say, God, I love her so much. And he said, that's what you used to say to me about me. And I had to learn that when you, whether it's you're coming home from the army or you lived in Germany for 20 years like I did or you're coming out of prison or, or you're going through a divorce or you're just coming out of, you don't need, you know, there's a lady on Facebook, dear lady on Facebook, her daughter just passed away like less than a year ago and now she's found her love of her life and I watch her and I worry about her. Because I understand that when you're in transition yes. like that, the only thing, only one you need is Jesus. Amen. Amen. You don't need Amen. a boyfriend. Amen. That's right. 
You, you can't have what everybody else has because you know you can't have the big things yet because God got to bring you up from small. Right. Yes. And when you try to go after those things, all you can do is destroy yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you're not ready for them. And so he says, lengthen your stakes. Mm -hmm. Strengthen your cords. Mm -hmm. yes. You remember when we were in the Army? Amen. And when, when, when we went to the field, we had a small, <coughs> like you'd have a half and I have a half. <coughs> and we put the halves together. And they give us some stakes. Yeah. Stake me about as long as this, right? And we would stake the tent in the ground. Mm. But then there were other tents that we would sleep under, like a GP medium, general purpose medium tent, sleep about 30 soldiers. It had a longer rope, mm -hmm. and it had a bigger stake. Huh? Mm. So the bigger the tent, the longer the rope. The bigger the tent, the bigger the stake. And God is saying, you may not even have the tent yet, but I want you to go out even though it looks crazy and buy some bigger stakes. I want you to go out and get some longer ropes. Even though people are looking at you like you crazy, I'm going to go fill out the paperwork anyway. I'm going to go to the car dealer and I'm going to get the keys from the dealer and I'm going to sit in the car I'm going to crank it up and say Father in the name of Jesus this is mine Amen. I'm going house but I ain't got a dime but I'm going looking for the house and am I saying something Amen. I don't know what to say but you know I'm going to go to the pastor on Tuesday and I'm going to tell him that I believe the Lord called me to preach Amen. Even though I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, I think I'll go to the college and go see the counselor. Come on now. Even though they told me that I really wasn't a college student, I'm going to lengthen my cords. Yes. I'm going to strengthen my yes. stakes. Yes. I'm going to move some stuff and some people yes. out of my house. I'm going to get rid of some of that old raggedy furniture because God going to give me a new couch and a new living room yes. table, and a new dining room yes. table. Yes. I'm going to get rid of this old ghetto-looking stuff because God is getting ready to enlarge my place. Come on, yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. And I'm using material things as object lessons, but I also want you to take this spiritually, yes, Lord. that God has a place for us. Amen. 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 That, that, that he will make room for you. But the intimacy part is so important. When I was living on Thurston Road, an empty apartment half the time didn't have no no food in the refrigerator, no bed to sleep on, sleep on the floor. Mm. But you know, I used to walk outside and the big old drug dealers would walk to Keep it up, Rev. Keep it up. We hear you. They be in the barbershop listening to me praising God. Amen. Give you authority. They start stuff start stepping out of your way. Amen. Huh? Take that same worship we did today. Take it home and do it at home. That's right. Amen. Because it's time for some stuff to start stepping out of the Christian's way. Because we ought to be the boss on one job somewhere. Yes. Look at somebody, if you will, and say, I'm tired of being small. Tired of being small. That's, my, that's the word for 2020. Give God a hand of praise. Amen. 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 Amen